Hello YouTube, my name is Crystal McCurdy. I'm a 19 year targeted individual in Atlanta, Georgia. I am making this video to speak to the targeted individual community so that we can come together and try to help each other survive. I'm on my walk with Christ. I've been saved three years now. And every day I try to learn more about the word and learn more about what Jesus has done for me. Um, right now I'm going to, I'm still on my confessions and clearing my soul of all this baggage from 19 years of torture, from Freemason witchcraft and demonic entities under the guise of scientific electromagnetic fields and things like that. And behind all that is the devil. You need to address it. Behind all that is witchcraft. And that's how I approach my targeted individual life. It is a spiritual walk. You are in the battle. You are outside of the matrix. You're in the battle. Pick up your shield and your sword and go to work on them witches. Amen. Today, I want to go into dream interpretation. When you start your walk, you will go through a lot of dreams and I feel like God is trying to tell me stuff all the time. I'm going to go back into confession later, but today I want to touch on the dreams that I've been having. Before I mentioned several dreams I would have in the beginning of my walk with Christ coming out of just the bondage of witchcraft and I would have very long dreams about serp being held by serpents and and just being in the catacombs of the skull and bones and, you know, just finding out that the whole world's worshiping the devil, that kind of stuff. It was very impactful along my, on, along my walk. Like it helped prove Christ to me. If I didn't have any other outside of evidence, my dreams prove enough of, of Christ for me. Um, one dream I was having recently is always with my child because my child is going through targeted individualism right now. She's going through it right now as a targeted individual. So all of my dreams, there are always a demonic attack on my child because that's the demonic world knows that's how I go to 100, zero to 100. It's always, always about them kids. The persecution of the Christ, all everyone who's gonna serve, worship Bell, it's about the kids. They're all trying to protect their families. It's not an excuse. It's not because you're putting your child above God. But Again, I understand more and more of why people do what they do. And so when I'm dreaming, I'm always dreaming about my child and trying to protect her or save her in some form or fashion. Um, a lot of times when I would live back when we were homeless and I was living with relatives, back when we were homeless and I was a homeless single parent, I was forced to move back in with relatives who were avid pagans and Egyptology and Satanists. And oftentimes I would dream of hell. I would be in a dream and I would feel myself drop down out of my body and I would literally be surrounded by screaming voices and I would be trapped in my sleep going <laughs> while someone's screaming for me to run. I've, I've dreamt of that more than once. So I can honestly say I've been there more than once. That used to be a favorite thing of the people I would live with, try to send me those kind of dreams of hell. But since I broke away from that, I'm slowly, steadily breaking away from that. Um, the dreams are not getting easier, but they're, they're not as extreme. Like oftentimes the devil would attack me through my children, always through my babies, because they know that's how I go to 100. And that spirit of murder will creep in. Always about the kids. Um, my last dream, I was in a village and my daughter was there. And everything just went pitch black. And all I could see was the image of goat head, a large, gigantic goat head. He was looking right at me and everything was pitch black. I couldn't see, but I grabbed her and I pulled her close to me. And the whole time I could feel his breath like going around me. And I, and I was praying to Jesus Christ, praying to Jesus Christ, always pray to Jesus Christ. That's how I know the devil's trying me and he's losing. Because every time I get in these situations, I always call on the name above all names and it works every time it works every time if you get to the point of calling the name in your sleep you are on your way to freedom 
for those of you who are bound by witchcraft, if you call the name in your sleep, you have enough cognitive sense in dreamland to call the name. It will work every time. And that was just a scenario of, of me actually feeling the breath of the giant goat head and me clutching my child and just being in utter darkness. I, it's always darkness when I'm dreaming, when I'm under attack. Um, I would have dreams about my place of birth. I would walk in the house and it was pitch black. And again, something was in that house. It was causing me sheer terror. Again, these dreams that go to sheer terror where you can't escape and you can't get out of it. That's when you need to call on the name. But I'm not going to go too deep into it. I'm just going to gloss over and try to get someone's opinion on these things. Because, like, my place of birth, when walking in, into the house and the house being in complete darkness. How great is the darkness? Mm -hmm. But inside of my room, there was a light. And I was I ran to the light inside of my room. This was a room that I've been assaulted in many times by these same people. And I I knew what that dream meant for me, the whole house being darkness and something creeping up the stairs and me feeling a terror until I walked into the light in the corner of my room. Um, that's just more, I, I more or less understand that one. But the biggest one that I had recently, again, it's about the kids. It's always about the kids because that's how that spirit of murder and rage will come in for me. They know I got delivered off these babies. Uh, nothing to go there. But for this last dream that I wanted to get an interpretation on, I was on a beach and there were other people around. There were like black people, white people, just random people all, all on the beach. And the water, the wind was blowing. It was a storm, a hurricane. The water was splashing everywhere, crashing on the waves on the beach. Waves crashed on the beach. It was just chaos. The palm trees are blowing in the wind. It was a hurricane on the beach. And these people... We're standing on the beach, just standing there, and I'm I'm watching them from a distance, and and I see that they have a little fire pit going, so I'm getting closer to it, and I see that they have my child tied up like a kebab on the fire pit, and was roasting her and turning her around, roasting her while she's screaming for me, mommy, mommy, help me. Again, when you're trapped in these dreams and you feel like anger and terror and you can't escape them, you. And nothing's clicking in your mind that this is witchcraft. Nothing's clicking. But again, I was at that point of going to 100, just getting so stressed out to well, I have to make a critical decision. And it was at that moment, at that particular moment, I ran forward into the crowd of people surrounding my kid because they were, they were pretty much cussing at me and wouldn't let me near them. So I ran, I just ran at them. And then I started putting my hands on them and pleading the blood of Jesus over them. <laughs> I kid you not. I was doing this in my sleep. I was pleading the blood of Jesus over these people. Just running through the crowd. And and then I did something. This was the confusing part because I want to know if I was dabbling in witchcraft. My favorite show was Avatar. Cora, I'm not even going to lie. It was my favorite show. And so in this dream, I didn't connect two and two together. I just lifted my hands up and snatched the souls out of these people. And they all fell down to the ground. There's was about 50 of them. And I felt like overwhelmed and overpowered. And I just lifted my hands up. And they they just dropped to the ground. And I'm holding these people like their spirits up in the air. And, I could, and at that point, I got afraid because there were no pigs to put them in. I'm like, there's no pigs here. What do I do with these people? And I'm holding them up like, oh, God, what do I do? And I called the name of Jesus. And I kid you not, he showed up. He showed up every time. He showed up every time. Hallelujah. And he was like, um, don't worry, I got this. Because I was holding these people up and I could just feel like stress and terror. Like, what do I do? There's no pigs here. Jesus. And he showed up and he said, don't worry about it. I got this. And I just remember feeling like a wash of relief. Such a relief every time he showed up. Like, just feeling at peace. Complete peace. And he took their souls or did something with it. But what I know from that point, I was standing on his shoulder he appeared in the form of a man but it was like a swirling a cloud mist of a man and he was giant that was confusing so i don't know what form god can appear to most people i'm leery of giants but i don't feel like in my spirit i don't feel like that's what that was because i was standing on over his on his shoulder and i was hugging his face and i was just at peace that's how large he appeared to me on this beach 
and at the end of the dream i could always hear like some snide comment and like he only showed up because of the babysitter <laughs> it's just those are the kind of battles i've been going through and i would love some feedback i can't promise you i'll read it all of it but if you have similar dreams of christ and you know he's working in your life definitely post something um side note as far as an update i am still in the warfare always for me my deliverance my walk has always been the greatest battle has always been about family that is the greatest battle like when in the bible abraham just left that was tremendous courage and faith in god just tremendous because i've tried to leave and i can't i feel bound i'm trapped like my my life is like on hold because why would i have more kids if i'm surrounded by pedophiles it's like i feel like everything is i'm bound by that i'm, I'm not gonna leave my child in this situation but again paganism and pedophilia and all kind of bestiality and homosexuality it all goes hand in hand and they're all practicing it do what thou will so for me being in atlanta i feel like i'm stuck here and i'm i'm praying that the most high would deliver me and my child i'm praying about it all the time i'm praying that he will take this rage out of me so i can entertain the possibility of being a helpmate i mean at least i have more discernment not to fall prey to someone who does is a pagan or practices pedophilia I, i'm not going through that again praise the lord thank you jesus so that's a step in the right direction but for the most part life is peaceful i pray and i work and i come home watch netflix turn off my mind read the bible and that's about it so no complaints around here. I'm pr Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything he's done. Hallelujah. But I do feel bound as far as not being able to m move forward in my life with all these witches in it. I'm not saying that they could stop everything God's will, but just knowing that if something happened to me where my kids would end up and what they're going through now, like if we go out in public, my daughter would just start crying for no reason. And I'm the one who's in her ear telling her she belongs to the Most High God. Bind and rebuke all witchcraft coming against her. Walk in righteousness. Be free of condemnation. Bind and rebuke Satan, the accuser of the brethren, in the name of Jesus. I'm the one building her up. Now, am I doing enough? Probably not. I slept like 2020. I slept all 2020. I was resting. And I know the demons that are working on her are getting stronger. Because I, if I sleep around her, I could feel something hit me in my face this was this was reason this is a reason i have not been hit by a spirit in a very long time no one's been able to breach my defenses so i know that whatever demonic activity she's going on in her other families and and in that house they are pretty much sapping the life out of her and i've had these demons actually strike me in my face where i could taste the blood i'm like okay I must be slipping. I got to grow in Christ. I need a prayer group. I'm looking for the first church. The first church. I I watch a lot of YouTube. I give shout out to... I uh, like Alan Parr. Um, Watchmen. Deborah Yah. Um, so many others. Um, I didn't make a list, but I do have a list. I have, I've, I've been on straightway. Pastor Dow lately just trying to learn and gain more knowledge about what people are going through in their journey and trying to be more self-sufficient i am a prepper in the making so i would love to go there but again am i ready to submit to that degree because i'm a truck driver and i'm gonna be in my truck so i don't know praise most high i do believe in shtf i am very much an anti-vaxxer I don't want to go into politics, but I am looking for a community, a tribe to build with. Not necessarily a cult, but again, a community, a tribe who praises the most high God, the creator, that one. I am looking to join, give what I can and be of assistance to those people because no one, the lone wolf normally doesn't make it during the apocalypse. So I got walkie talkies and I got some water barrels and some food savers and we could do this.
I'm learning how to can food. I'm looking for the right organization who can help me get to the next level in my prayer life. I would love to go to Straightway. So you send me send a video over there and see if I can. Can a woman go and keep to herself and keep herself to the most high without having to be bound or into immediate forcing into stuff? Like, I have questions. But I still, I, I agree with what they're doing and just being self-sufficient. So I, I love that aspect of it. As far as me and my relationships, I have a world of therapy to work through. Lots of therapy. YouTube's my therapy. And Christ. So I hope, I'm hoping you all enjoy this because you are a therapy for me. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening. Praise most high. Um, I would love any feedback. Targeted individuals. Stay strong. I would love to be a help to you. But again, I'm going through my own battles. I would love to be able to say I could help everybody. But that's not true. Like right now, I'm fighting an eviction campaign. They literally won't receive my money. So these are things that just normal things that happen in targeted individual life. So you see why I don't dress up. I don't do none of that because from the things I've been delivered from. Like I'm a totally different person. On a totally different level. And those of us who were truly persecuted. Have a different level of grace than the average person. So I'm trying to figure out what is he calling for me to do with all this grace he's been building for me. I'm clearly on the front line, taking all the bullets and all the hits. And I invoke the spirit of the most high instead of going towards rage and murder. Hallelujah. Go through the fire, through the fire and burn out of yourself. Hallelujah. Let me finish this with prayer. I thank you, Father God. All praise in the name of Jesus who died for my sins. I give you glory, Lord. Every knee has got to bow in Jesus' mighty name. Forgive me of my sin, Lord. Make me holy in the body of Christ. Forgive me of my sins and make me holy in the body of Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus over me and over my household, over my health and my finances. Bind and rebuke all witchcraft coming against me, Father. Release your battle angels and pursue my pursuers in the name of Jesus. All praise the only begotten Son of the Most High. All praise the Most High. In the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen.